guys, and in the previous video, we added headers to our Raspberry Pi Pico. Now we're going to test them. We'll show you how to do this by downloading and using MicroPython, CircuitPython and C. Also, we'll take some LED strips outside. Powered by a battery. Ghost, ghost. <laughs> now we've attached our header fins, we've brought our Raspberry Pi Pico outside. My brother's going to briefly show you how to light a LED on a breadboard using MicroPython. This is the same code we used in our first ever Pico video, so if you've not seen that, go check it out. All I've done is I've added a new variable called LED pin, which just allows me to change the pin number quite easily. As you can see right now, it's 25. So if you just go ahead and quickly run this code, as you can see, the onboard LED starts flashing. Let's do something more interesting. Let's light up an off-board LED. Now this pin right here is GPIO pin 14. So back to the code, we go LED pin is gonna be the GPIO pin 14. Let's run that. The pin I'm pointing at here next to GPIO 14 is ground. I don't recommend doing this because it'll break your LED, but let's break my stuff, not yours. So I'm just going to touch the big leg of the LED to GPIO pin 14 and the smaller leg to ground. And as you can see, it's doing the exact same as what the onboard LED did. I've just hooked this up to a breadboard now. If you want to know how a breadboard works, we've done a fabulous video explaining how a breadboard works for beginners. So go check that out. Link should be in the description or a pop up right now. So let's just put this wire here. And this is a circuit that we had running before. We don't want to break the LED, we'll put it for a resistor. This is a 270 ohm resistor. Audi's around the 330 ohm resistor should do the job. It's just so we don't reduce the life of your LED. The code we just used to light that LED was in MicroPython. Instead of using MicroPython, you can also use CircuitPython. The good thing about CircuitPython on the Pico is that you don't have to just run it on Thonny like you did for MicroPython. You can actually run it on other code editing apps like VS Code, for example. So I'm going to go get CircuitPython on my Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm just going to hold down the button like we did in the first video and plug it in and wait. As you can see, that's come up as a removable disc ready for me to put something on it. In a previous video, we put MicroPython on the Pico. This time, let's go get CircuitPython to put on it. I've gone to circuitpython.org. Now I'm going to go to Downloads, and then I'm going to search for Raz... And it's already popped up. The Raspberry Pi Pico. Then download the UF2 now. Click that. Okay, it's come up, so I'm just going to drag it in. Now I have Circuit Python on my Pico. As you can see here, it's come up as a removable drive, so if we just browse to that, um, there's a file here called code.py. Now, whenever you edit this um, file, and you save it, and then instantly it runs that on your Pico Pi. That's how Circuit Python works on the Pico. Here is the same code we used in our first video. It is in MicroPython. Now, this is, does the same thing, but it's in CircuitPython. You can see it's got the same logic, but just a few differences. I won't go through them, I'll let you study the differences. And also, if you go to github.com forward slash Google Apps, we've got the code here, if you wanted to use it. I am now going to open this. It's CircuitPy here, which is my little Pico. And here it's got code.py, so I'm just going to open that. Now it wouldn't be like us if we didn't edit the file using the shell. So let's go cd media pi and then circuit pi. It will most likely be mounted in forward slash media, forward slash your username, in this case pi, forward slash circuit pi. Let's see what files we have. So right now we're inside this circuit pi here, if you can see that. So V I um, code dot py and see this is this is the code that I've just written. I'm using the H J K and L keys to move around here. If I want to be nifty, 
J is down, so I could do 5J to move me down five lines. And I can use the dollar sign to move me to the end of a line. I want to replace this 0 0.5 with 0 0.1, so I'm going to press R for replace and then 1. Keep your eye on the bottom left of the screen. I'm going to press colon W to save it. <laughs> I'm about to press enter, so this should flash, flash quicker. I've got some code here written in CircuitPython. The code is to light this LED strip of lights. So theoretically, when I press save, it should work. So if you can turn out the lights. Oh, there. Save. Instead of using CircuitPython, you can use C or C++. I'm going to blink this LED without using MicroPython or CircuitPython. I've made a simple program in C to make my own UF2 firmware. I've done another video of how I built that. As usual, unplug, plug back in while having the button pressed and holding it. And now this has popped up. I'll just drag my firmware fi file that I've built across and it should just work. One last thing I wanted to mention before we wrap up. I've been using Mu Code Editor with CircuitPython. You can edit your code, save it, and then it'll run. You can toggle this bottom window with serial. I can press Control C now, which will get me into REPL and stop the program running. Now I can run code here line by line and it'll run on the Pico. And I found that really useful. If I just go import board and then DIR board, it'll run it on the Pico. When I press Control D, it will go back up to running the main code. That REPL has saved me a load of time. I really recommend it. Well, that was the result of our first weekend with the Pika Pies. Check back for more videos. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.